talk about the state of your position at this point. You've lost some bodies recently. Yeah, I mean, you know, Nate uh, was a real big blow to us, but, uh, you know, it's next man up. I mean, you've heard that over and over in football, it's next man up. And uh, whenever that injury happens or whenever that setback happens at a certain position, as a coach, I believe that you have to be preparing the threes and the twos because at any time in the game or during the week or preseason practice, they could elevate and they have to be ready. So I think when you start talking about 12 games, being in a BCS conference, there are guys right now that we don't think are going to play and they don't even think they're going to play. They're going to have to help us win some games coming down the line. Is the difference between what you're dealing with now and a year ago is that at least now there is a next man to be up? Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> believe me, uh, yeah, I thought about that. Uh, last night, but yeah, there is a next man to go up there. We have more depth. We have guys that are more in a position of ready to play, guys who who can contribute if, if called upon. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with uh, Coach Dykes and everybody, the two coordinators and all the coaches and the entire team, all the players getting prepared and not being saying, well, hey, we weren't ready or this guy wasn't prepared or coach, I didn't think I was going to play or any of that. When that happens, the coach knows who he's pointing to. That kid says, Coach, I'm ready, and we, we keep on going. And I think that's, that's the kind of program Coach Dykes is building now, is that's what you have when you have a program. Guys are ready to step up and play. Guys come in and get ready to play, and they get prepared all summer to play. At least when we were looking, it seemed like Devontae is kind of taking the, the contact, a lot of the contact at, at Mike. And then when it comes to kind of maybe le less impact, it, that Hardy kind of takes one. Can you explain what the – what the, the split is between the two of them? Uh, the split is really by feel. And, uh, you know, Hardy has played football here. We know what he's all about. Mm -hmm. we got some guys that, uh, you know, we're not sure what they can do. We have a pretty good idea. But what they can do on day one and day two and day three is different than what they're doing on day 11, 10, and, um, and 10 11, and 12. And so, therefore, I still want to keep putting these guys in and testing them. But the older guys can't get rusty. I mean, you know, they can't go days without practicing and playing. We don't have, you know, all-American type players here, but we have good players that can reach an all-American status with good practice. But when you start talking about Downs and Nickerson, basically what you're seeing is a guy who's played football, mm -hmm. knows football, and a guy who is at a new position who has never played in a BCS level. And we're trying to give him as many looks as possible to have him ready. And really, it's not just him. It's Ed Tandy. Uh, we put uh, Hamilton in there today at the mic. I mean, we put a lot of guys in. I'm going to play a lot of guys at the Willie linebacker and the Sam. And I've, I've always done that to make yourself versatile. And so you don't have to say, well, man, this guy is the next best Sam. I can just put in the next best guy. And I think what happens is, is that when all those guys know that the other guy knows every position, if I'm an older guy and all of a sudden you come in and you're a younger guy, I have confidence in you that you know what's going on because we've already gone through the rigors of practice and being ready to go. Is Barton also part of the mix now inside again? Barton is always part of the mix inside. Uh, you know, because you had moved him to the outside, right? Yeah, he's playing. He's playing the, the Willie or the weak side linebacker, which is tied in a lot to the mic. And so with that, he kind of gets mental mic reps. When we're in the meeting room, I ask him questions about the middle linebacker position. I ask, it doesn't matter what your position is with us. If you play the strong side linebacker, I'm gonna ask you a weak side linebacker position. If you play the middle linebacker, I'm gonna ask you about the strong. Because everybody has to know it, because everybody, you never know who's gonna go in. And if I'm a Mike and you come in at Sam, I can help you get lined up. I can say, no, I, you need to be here. This is what's going on. And that, that helps and gets everybody going. Is the difference a linebacker that noticeable to where it was on your mind last night? I mean, it, it, the difference in depth. No, the, so. what was on my mind last night is that we had we had a, we had a young man who was tremendous, worked tremendously hard to get back, yeah. and, and tremendously uh, hard to be part of this team. And I felt more for him than I did for myself and for this team. Again, everybody's got people getting hurt. Everybody's got somebody getting kicked off or whatever. You have to have your other guys ready. What I was thinking about last night was that, that unfortunately this happened to Nate, but fortunately we have the depth that we didn't have last year to figure it out, to figure it out. Not that I had an answer, but to figure it out. And then what today is what you see is us figuring it's it out. It's not like where Forbes went down last year and all of a sudden you don't have anybody who's played 
a mic or an inside at, at the BCS level. Now you have two or three guys that have started games. Right, right. And then we got some young guys that we're trying to get ready also uh, to, to play because I think for us to make it through the season, a lot of guys are going to have to play while other guys are injured and recuperating and getting ready to come back. We have to have guys to step up and play. And so that's just kind of how I've always done in my coaching career, try to play as many people as possible and uh, and try to keep people fresh because I think when you do have some injuries at your position, it bodes well for you at that time. Any thoughts on the new JC guys that have come in late, Kearney and Wainwright? Uh, really pleased with both of them. Uh, Kearney has been someone that I uh, thought would be heady and athletic and have football savvy, and he's got all those things. Wainwright is a guy that I thought would bring toughness, bring a mentality to, to the position and to the team that's welcome on any football team, and a guy who's given it his all and glad to be at Cal and wants to be at Cal and giving his all for Cal. He's been all of that. And those two guys have been nothing but a pleasure. I think not only the linebackers and the defense, but the team has welcomed them because they see what these guys have added uh, to the position and to the team. Wainwright got his bell run on that crackback block. Is he okay? Or yeah, he's it? all right. Okay. He's all right. He went back in, and, and uh, you know, that's football. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, the thing is, the offensive guys like him because he, you know, he talked a little bit with them, but then he was like, let's go, and they were like, let's go. And he and uh, Ray walking off, patting each other on the helmet. He is a kid that's, like I said, brings a mentality to us that he's all about ball, and, and this is what happens in ball, and sometimes you get on the, on the short end of the stick. And so uh, he, some other kids in some other places that I've been might have fought, fought right there. It wasn't about fighting it. Hey, sometimes you get it in football. They catch you, and that's that's what happened. You mentioned Hamilton. I know he also playing on the inside a little bit. How's he been doing so far this camp? He's doing great. He's doing great. Uh, you know, I just we played around with him today in there and uh, showed a natural ability to find the ball. Didn't I didn't I put him in there, didn't tell him too much and said, Hey, let me watch you. Let's see you go. And so uh, been very pleased with him. His high school coaches did a great job with him as far as getting prepared, ready for football on the college level. And uh, so very, very pleased with him. Again, he's another guy that can play multiple, multiple positions. A lot of the guys we have not only can play multiple positions now, but we'll, throughout their career will play multiple positions. And again, as time goes on, that's what makes us deeper and deeper and deeper because guys will know more than one position. How's Isaiah been doing? Doing great, doing great. Again, another kid comes from a really good high school program, came in the program, has been taught. You can tell he's been taught and trained the right way, understand some of the things that we need to see that we need to teach and that for him to learn those concepts. Concepts are very important at the college level. And those young guys come from programs where they were taught the concepts that would carry him forward to be successful. This is rugby background and Tanny's rugby background help them with their sure tackling and other, other Uh you know I don't know. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. But uh, those guys those guys are really good football players. They're aggressive, they're fearless and I'm sure the rugby has a lot to do with that too.